Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do my August 2019 manga haul. There is a lot to get through this month, so I'm just gonna get right into it. First off, I got a few more uh, issues of Area 88. These are like really old Viz releases in the like chapter by chapter kind of comic book style release. I don't believe this has been released in any other format in English. Um, I bought the first 10 issues from a local comic store a couple months ago, I think, and I went back to the comic store and found uh, volumes or issues 11 through 18, I believe. I uh, haven't started reading this yet. I believe there's like almost 50 issues of this, and I don't even think it was completed in English, if I remember correctly. But now at least I have the first... 18 issues and that's you know a, a little chunk of the series there that I can read um, and they were a dollar each so it wasn't it's not breaking the bank to to have these in my collection uh, it was one of the first series ever to be brought over to North America manga series and uh, yeah I think it's just kind of a piece of history and I'm, I'm glad to own a bit of it Next uh, is series that I'm continuing and completing. So final volume 18 of Barakemon here. I have not read this one yet as it came in the mail, I believe, mm, Friday, a couple days ago. So yeah, I'm excited to read this final volume of Barakemon. Um, it's a long series. Like I didn't feel like the series had to be 18 volumes, but I did really enjoy it as I was reading it. So I'm Happy to have all of it now and, and read this final volume uh, once I get to it. Next, continuing cross game. These are, uh, the first one is a three in one, but the rest of them are two in one omnibuses. This is by Mitsuru Adachi. It is a baseball manga, um, but it is so, so good. I'm not really a sports manga kind of person, but I am really loving cross game and, uh, you can definitely look out for a full series review once I have finished reading it. I believe I'm on volume 5 or 6 at this point, or Omnibus 5 or 6. Uh, it is an amazing series so far. I cannot wait to finish reading it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a sports manga, but it also has, you know, rom a bit of romance in it. It has, uh, you know, it's a slice of life kind of story about family and relationships and and baseball and it's so so good uh so far so i'm really happy to have all of it now and yeah i i'm super stoked that that i've been able to collect it all and i can't wait to re finish reading it next off i've got some continuations that aren't complete yet um volume two of emanon this is Eminon Wanderer Part 1. So, second volume of the Eminon manga series, but now we're starting a new kind of story. Uh, this is a really good, calm, uh, very slow paced, quiet story. Beautiful art. And this one, this volume, the first like 72 pages are in full color. And it is gorgeous. There is. A lot of nudity. I'm not showing you nude pictures, but uh, the full color for the first 72 pages. It is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, yeah, it's it's incredible, and there's a lot of nudity in it in this volume in particular. However, it's not like fan service nudity. It's just completely natural, and I really enjoyed that because um, I think that. <laughs> People see nudity as an inherently sexual thing and as an inherently, like, uh, inappropriate thing. And this volume is just like, no, they're bathing or she's out in the forest and she's bathing in the river or whatever. Like, of course, she would be naked. Um, and, yeah, it just, I really enjoyed this volume. I can't wait for the next one. This is a beautiful series uh, put out by Dark Horse and I highly recommend picking it up. Next, 
volume 13 of Devil's Line. This is the final volume technically of the story. However, the, there is another volume coming out next year that is of side stories or extra bonus stories. So I'm not counting this as technically complete yet, even though the main story is completely done. Uh, I did do a re series review on this and it is up now. You can go check it out if you want to hear my thoughts on Devil's Line. Next, volume four of Alhar Ride. Um, this is one of my favorite shoujo series. So happy to have it in English release, English physical release now, put out by Viz. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked to have it. I'm missing volume five, but I do have volume six of Alhar Ride as well. And yeah, I just, I love this series. It's a great shoujo. Uh, Ayo Sakisaka is a wonderful shoujo mangaka. If you haven't read anything by her, I highly recommend picking up uh, Strobe Edge as well. Next, Volume 5 of Shortcake Cake. This is another Viz release, uh, and this is ongoing right now. This is the newest volume that just came out. Beautiful art on the cover. I love the character designs. I think that they're just really, really stunningly gorgeous characters and it's a cute one about a boarding house i do have a first impressions of this series up on my channel so please go check it out if you're more interested here um interested in hearing my thoughts on shortcake cake but this is one of my favorite uh shoujo releases at the moment next volume 11 of bungo stray dogs uh this is i believe actually the light novel is getting published by yen press right now as well I have no interest in light novels, but if you do have an interest in light novels, then maybe check it out. But the manga is great. It's got very dark humor. Uh, it's a very dark premise. It deals with the mafia, a detective agency, um, and a bunch of other kind of players in this big sort of turf war happening amongst uh, skill, like a kind of magic skill users. They're not really magic. They're just people that are born with special skills. And... Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It kind of reminds me of Soul Leader in the way that it's got all these wacky, zany characters, but it's a dark story. Um, there's always beautiful color pages in the beginning. Uh, lots of violence, but lots of uh, very, very funny comedic moments that, that kind of release the tension a bit and keep it more lighthearted despite the dark kind of subject matter. Next, Classmates, Volume 2. Uh, Asumiko Nakamura, definitely one of my favorite mangaka, super happy to have classmates, loved this volume. This is a boys love series, and uh, in this volume now we're kind of looking at the future of these boys and, and what's going to happen um, come, you know, college life and everything, and how they're going to handle that. Uh, Asumiko Nakamura has very interesting character designs that I really really love. It's a very distinct art style um, but yeah highly recommend checking out Classmates and I love this cover. The, the color scheme is just really really beautiful. Volume 8 of Tokyo Terraba Girls. Second last volume. This one was so good. I cannot wait to read the last volume. I love this series. If you like Jose, highly recommend checking this out. Oh, probably should have put them together. Just realized I also have volume 17 of Barakemon. Uh, I did read this one already uh, during the, I think it was the Get Graphic Readathon recently. But yeah, I guess I also bought volume 17 of Barakemon this month. It just came a bit earlier, which is why I guess it got stuck at a different part of the pile here. Next, I got a whole whack load more of Banana Fish. Uh, I basically got, I have the entire series now, except for Volume 6. So, I bought Volumes 1 to 3 a couple months ago, I think, and I really enjoyed those first three volumes, and so I wanted to get the rest of it. Um, I'm just missing Volume 6 because Chapters does not have it. Uh, and I'm hoping they may get another copy so I can buy from them, because I enjoy buying from Chapters since I get points on my points card. However, if worse comes to worse, I will have to order it from somewhere else. But 
yeah, it's a set in New York in, I believe, the 80s. Yep, in the 80s, right there. Uh, and it's about this youth here. He's about 17. He is uh, in kind of in the sex work industry, also involved with drugs. And there's this thing that is still a mystery to me at this point, three volumes in, uh, called Banana Fish. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, there's detectives trying to figure out what's going on. This kid has been roped into and involved in this whole situation, uh, drugs and crime and all that. And so uh, there's also a Japanese ex uh, reporter who brought along a, another young man who's about 19, um, also Japanese, and they've now been roped in. And so here he is here, the young Japanese guy. Uh, yeah, and it's sort of a boys love series as well, but it's more seems to be more focused on the action and the the gang violence and stuff. But it is classified as a shoujo. I never watched the anime actually. I was planning on it, but I just never got around to it. Um, but I'm it's this is a manga series I've always wanted to own, but I knew a ton of it was very out of print and thankfully due to the anime series, a lot of these volumes came back into print. And so this is the final volume 19. Uh, so hopefully I'll get volume six at some point soon and I can finally, after years of having my eye on this very out of print series, uh, own the whole thing and read it and enjoy it. But yeah, super, super happy to have that because it was one of those things that I always just assumed I would never get because I knew the volumes were so out of print and I didn't want to bother, you know, trying to hunt them down one by one. Uh, but as soon as the anime came out and they announced that they'd be reprinting, uh, the manga, then I I was very excited to, to pick it up. So there's that. And then we will move on to some new series that I started this month. One I am so, 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 so excited for Inside Mari by Shuzo Oshimi. I love Shuzo Oshimi, uh, Flowers of Evil. One of my favorite manga, hands down. Inside Mari, I love this. I've wanted it in English for so long. I watched Denpa Books pick it up and release it in the States, but I couldn't get it here in Canada unless I wanted to pay an arm and a leg for shipping uh, because the, uh, there was no Canadian distribution rights for Denpa Books up until literally like this month. Um, actually, I was under the impression it would be September by the time we would get Denpa books uh, here in Canada, but uh, I guess they came a bit earlier. And so I got volumes one, two, uh, and four, because on chapters, volume three is still unavailable to purchase at the point in time when I bought these. Um, so there's still some weird things going on with the Denpa books stuff in on chapters at least. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out as soon as they come into stock, then I will buy them. But I think there's still some discrepancies there about the release of some Denpa titles in Canada. Uh, anyway, super stoked to have it. I pre-ordered some of the other stuff as well, or the other volumes as well. So I'm, I'm super happy to have it. I've been waiting so long. I got so excited when it was announced that a publisher had picked it up. And then only to be extremely disappointed when I figured out that it wouldn't be distributed in Canada and then had to wait a very long time. Almost, I think this was released at the end of like last year, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, I had to wait a long time to, to figure out that if it was ever actually going to be released here or not. Um, but the frustration, I guess, is over and I'm happy to have it now. Next, at a used bookstore, I, find, I found this series, Alive, The Final Evolution. And I remember um, Laura over at Manga Hoarder um, talking about this series at one point or showing this cover. I recognized it from one of her videos at some point. I don't remember if she's read it or what or if she just happened to mention it. I have no idea, but uh, I remembered it and I went, oh, this looks really interesting. Um, I did find the first six volumes at this used bookstore. This is an old Delray title, um, and it's kind of a, like, sort of apocalyptic 
Uh, but basically, eight volumes were released in English in physical volumes until I guess Del Rey went out of out of business. Kodansha, as far as I know, picked this up digitally, and you can read all twenty one volumes digitally. But only eight were released physically, unfortunately, and. I do have a video about this one coming out at some point. It might be in the next month or so. Um, my thoughts on the first six volumes. So check out or look out for that video if you're more interested uh, in this series, Alive, The Final Evolution. I did enjoy it. Um, I'm upset that I there's only two more physical volumes I could potentially collect. But uh, yeah, definitely look out for my, my review video on the first six volumes uh, once that is released. Next, I got the first five volumes of Hatsuharu. This is a shoujo series currently being released by Yen Press. And I believe it's 13 volumes in total. But I just bought the first five. This is written from the perspective of the male instead of the female, which most shoujo are. Um, it's, it's pretty good. I do also have a first impressions video of this. I don't remember when it's coming out. Uh, I pre-schedule all my videos, uh, all my review videos and stuff, so it's filmed and scheduled, I just don't remember when it's coming out. But it is a fun shoujo for what it is, uh, but definitely, again, look out for my video on my first impressions of this series when that is, whenever that comes out. Next, volume one of Skullface bookseller Hon Honda-san. Uh, this is one that I... Planned on watching the anime, but never got around to it. And then when I found the manga was getting released, I went, well, I'll probably enjoy the manga more anyway. So I haven't read this yet. I'm excited to. But my impression is this guy works at a used bookstore, I think. Or maybe it's just a regular bookstore. I'm not sure. But it's about the wacky and zany coworkers and customers that come into the store often uh, to buy books. So, yeah, I'm excited to read it. And then one last massive stack. <laughs> this is, these are titles that I bought uh, this month that are new series to me, but also complete. I bought them complete. So all in one go. Uh, this is Dive. It is a sports manga about diving. Uh, I loved the anime for it, and so I really, really was excited when I found out there was a manga for it released here. This is one that has many, many, many um, different ways to consume this story. It was originally a novel, I believe. It's been made into a live-action movie. It has an anime series, and it has two manga adaptions. This is the newest manga adaption after the anime aired, because these are the anime uh, characters here, whereas the old manga adaption is very, very, very different art style. I loved the anime. I thought it was so good. I I really love this type of sports manga where it's more of like an individual sport, uh, but they're still all kind of on the same team, but they're all competing against each other technically because it's an individual sport. Diving isn't really a team sport. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'll definitely be doing a review on this series. I really loved it. I read it during the Get Graphic Readathon. Um, yeah, super happy to have it. Really, really loved it. Next, a series I honestly thought I would not find, ever. I found the entire series of Welcome to the NHK at a used bookstore for a very, very good price. Um, it was about between $5 and $6.50 per volume. Uh, some of them were priced differently uh, than the others, but yeah, it, I paid, I think, in total $45 for the entire series. Uh, and these are all Tokyo Pop. <clears throat> out of print, I believe, but you can buy them off of Right Stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. I believe you can buy them off of Right Stuff, and I don't know if it's one of their, like, print-on-demand things, or if they just have copies of it, I'm not sure. But these are the Tokyo Pop ones that are not, uh, these were actually printed back, back in the day, uh, when the series was originally, uh, being released. And this is about a neat uh, who is in his early 20s and 
this high school girl who is trying to cure him of his kind of shut-in behavior. Uh, he also happens to be working on a erotic game with his neighbor. Uh, it is very, very, very nudity-heavy. It has the 18-plus mature rating on it for a reason. If you are easily disturbed by uh, nudity and sexual themes, especially when involving... Uh, he has many fantasies about this this girl who is a bit younger than him. Uh, yeah, I would steer clear of this one if, if that's going to bother you. But I do have all eight volumes, and I am excited to own it because it is one I've wanted to read for a very long time and been interested in. I did watch a bit of the anime back in the day, but yeah, I, another series I thought I'd never get my hands on, and it, I just walked into my local used bookstore, and they had the whole stack sitting there. I took it off the shelf immediately and was super happy to find it. Next, uh, this is Whenever Our Eyes Meet, a woman's love anthology collection. Uh, this was really good. I really enjoyed it. This is a Yuri that is about uh, workplace older by older, I mean just women, not high school girls, and it's not focusing. I don't know why it's not focusing. I apologize. But anyway, this was very good. If you like Yuri, and especially if you like Yuri that is not just about high school girls, I definitely recommend this one because it's a bunch of different authors. I love anthologies because you get a bunch of different authors' perspectives on the same topic. This one is Eclair, a girls' love anthology. Uh, why is it not focusing? Let's see if I can get it to focus closer up, maybe? No... Anyway, this is Eclair. Um, I haven't read this one yet, but I did read the Women's Love Anthology. This one's also a bit thicker, um, but I'm excited to read this one. And there is another one coming out um, that's another Girls Love Anthology that I have pre-ordered as well. My giant stack of books is starting to tower and topple over. All right. <laughs> Almost there. Next... H.P. Lovecraft's The Hound and Other Stories. I'm glad I got this one. I bought the other newer Go Tanabe release of H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness and really loved it. Um, I liked the other one better than this one, unfortunately. I was more hyped for this one because of how much I loved the other one, but still good. Glad to have it. Um, next, another one I found the same day I found Welcome to the NHK. This is Blue by Kiriko Nananan. This is a Ponent Mon uh, fanfare release. Uh, this is one I also saw Laura over at Manga Hoarder talking about at one point, I believe. And this is a sort of a girl's love story, but I wouldn't call it a Yuri because I think Yuri has a different connotation than what this series um, is actually trying to portray. Uh, but this is a beautiful release. It's got, like, photo paper in it. Um, and this is an alternative manga, I believe. It is, it was really beautiful. I really enjoyed it. And I hope to pick up more of these, of this style of manga and um, by this publisher. I was so happy to find it because this is, like, U.S. price was twenty three ninety nine, So Canadian would have been almost probably $30 or so. Uh, and I got this for $9 at the used bookstore, and yeah, as soon as I saw it, snatched it up as well with Welcome to the NHK at the same time, because this is one, again, that I, I went, wow, that's something I'd really love to own one day, and happy to have it. Next, we got Little Miss P. I'll definitely be making a video about this one. This is the Anthropomorph anthropomorphized period that visits women um, and it was very funny the art is uh, very kind of cutesy and alternative style I really loved it I definitely want to make a video about this one another Asumiko Nakamura title Made in Railways this is another Denpa books release that I had been waiting a very long time to see in Canada Super, super happy to have it. Haven't read it yet, but I will be soon. Uh, 
and another Denpa release that I've been waiting for, Shintaro Kago's uh, Super Dimensional Love Gun. Haven't read this one, will not be opening this up to show you any art because it is extremely graphic, but I'm definitely happy to have this um, one I've wanted. I've had my eye on this for a long time. Finally, Stupid Love Comedy by Siu 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 Sakurai. This is a great three-in-one complete omnibus about this um, mangaka who is a bit uh, not reliable at all. <laughs> Um, I do have a video about this coming out, a review video. I don't remember, sorry, I don't remember when that video will be coming out, but I have a lot to say, a lot of good things to say about this series, so please check out the video about it when that comes out. Um, I loved this so, so, so much. My only thing is, don't go into this thinking it's going to be a romance. This is not a romance. Um, I thought it was going to be, and it is not. Turns out I loved it more than I thought I would, but for different reasons than I thought I would love it. So that is all about that one um, until my review video comes out. That is everything I bought in August. That is a lot of manga volumes. I don't know how many it is. Um, if you've read any of these series, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, whatever, leave them down below. would love to hear it. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, look out for a bunch of review videos. They'll be coming out about a lot of these series here. So yeah, thanks for watching.